Radhe Radhe. Engaging discussion that we were having. So thank you for that. Welcome everybody to today's edition of Daily Wisdom from Bhagavad Gita. A very warm good morning, good evening to all of you, depending upon where you're joining us from. So we are on Shloka 410 is what we discussed yesterday. Today we will conclude that. Um, we will go through some of the more aspects of what we spoke about yesterday, the top three enemies of human beings in the mind, uh, as well as look at, watch a very inspirational video from Swamiji related to this topic as well. So without much ado, let, let's get started. I'm going to share my screen and we will get started by invoking the blessings of God and Guru. So let me share my desktop, share sound and say share. Are you able to see it in presentation? Yes. Let me get it in presentation mode. Okay. So we'll do our opening prayers. You are welcome to do that with your mute on. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu, Guru Devo Maheshwarha. Guru Sakshat Par Brahma Tasmai Shri Guru E Namaha Vasudeva Sutam Devam Kamsa Chanur Mardanam Devaki Paramanandam Krishnam Vande Jagat Gurum Krishnam Vande Jagat Guru. All right. So, Radhe Radhe, good morning, good evening again to all of you. Let's get started directly into the shloka and then we will get underway with today's topic and some of the stuff from yesterday as well. <laughs> some recited, you're welcome to follow along. Veet Raghabhaya Krodha. Manmaya mamu pashritaha Bahavo gyana tapasa Uta madhava magataha. Okay, let's take a few hands. MG, please go ahead. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Vita raga bhayat krodha Manmaya mamu pashritaha. Bahavognana tapasa puta madhava magata. Nice, Radhe Radhe. thank you. Radhe Radhe. All right, let's take a few more hands. Shyamji. Radhe Radhe Shyamji. Radhe Radhe. Vit raga bhaye krodha manmaya mamu pashritaha bahavognana tapasa puta madhava magata. Radhe Radhe. Nice, thank you. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe Sandhya Ji. Radhe Radhe Sandhya. Radhe Radhe. Veet Raga Bhaya Krodha Manmaya Mamu Pashritaha Bahavu Gyan Tapasa Uta Madhava Magataha. Very nice, thank you. Okay, let's take... All right, four more hands we have. So we can take all. Radhe Radhe Apad. Ra Radhe Radhe, Vita Raga Bhaya Krodha, Manmaya Mam Upashritaha, Bahavodnana Tapasa, Uta Madhava Magataha. Thank you, Mataji, very nice. All right, three more hands, last three hands. Let's take those and then we'll get started. Radhe Radhe Pragi Ji. Radhe Radhe, thank you. <coughs> Vit rag bhai krodha man me ama mu prashitaha vivo gyan tapsa puta madhbhav magataha. Thank you. Thank you. Vit rag. Radhe Radhe Manvita ji. Radhe Radhe. Vita Raga Bhaya Kroda Manmaya Mamu Pashritaha Bahavo Gyana Tapasa Uta Madhava Magataha Very nice. Thank you. Amrita Ji, very nice. All right. 
थैंक यू राधे राधे वीतराग भय क्रोधा मन्मया उपाश्रिता बहवो ज्ञान तपसा पूता मद भाव आगता राधे राधे बीत राग भय क्रोध मन्मया माम उपाश्रिता बहवो ज्ञान तपसा पूता मद भाव आगता राधे राधे Thank you, Radhe Radhe. So in this, Lord Krishna is saying, being free from attachment, fear, and anger. By the way, they are all family members. Okay, they have a very good relationship with each other, like we discussed yesterday. Uh, one is a symptom, basically fear, anger. They are the symptoms, and attachment is the root cause, the real cause. Right? Becoming fully absorbed in me by taking refuge in me. Many persons in the past became purified by knowledge of me and thus attained by divine love. So this is the shloka that we are discussing. So let's move on. So before that, uh, like we have introduced this segment, I pick up some of the questions that people have asked in previous session, which we take. So I'll spend about maybe about two to three minutes on this one, um, on this particular thing. So um, one of the discussions that took place yesterday uh, was, I think, one of the questions that came up was regarding the journey of the soul after life, right? What the rituals that we do. all that stuff does it truly help right swami ji has answered that question in one of the smxs he gave a very simplified response around it but there could be a little more nuances around it as well now unfortunately i have forgotten what had happened and so have you as well okay and for a good reason we know what we there is there are things that happen after the soul concludes its journey in this cross body uh, there is a reason for those 13 days and stuff not only for getting closure but whether what is offered to them truly helps them on the way or not if there is a nuanced response to it i think swami ji would be the best authority to answer on that so i'll try to get more specifics around it um but then um, in one of the smx somebody asked and he said it's more for the souls you know uh, the people who are left behind for their closure more than anything else but if it requires a little more nuanced response i would try to get that um uh, from swami ji then i get an opportunity so there are a couple of other things so one uh, one question that was asked is one really needs a strong will to let go of our attachments which is right we know that our attachments is uh, the biggest bane of human kind right so i just said it is the biggest bane how do we develop that strong power strong will power and stay focused now swami ji has tackled this question in mind management will power is like a muscle right the prefrontal cortex of our brain the thicker it is the more will power we can exert and it's like a muscle the more you exert the stronger it becomes it's like a strength training we do when we go to gym or endurance training that we do to strengthen muscle similarly we can strengthen our will power as well so whenever we listen to our mind we are reducing our will power whenever we exercise our intellect and overpower our mind we are making our will power stronger so in everything in life presents us with our opportunity either to cater to our mind which which basically makes our will power weaker or to exercise our intellect and make our will power stronger right it's like shall i have that extra scoop of ice cream yes or no shall i go for that extra um, you know snooze of um, sleep yes or no shall i go for um, you know that uh, next netflix flick or do something which is more productive for my brain yes or no shall i listen to news do some unproductive activity in the morning because that interests me or read something or invest my time wisely all these things the opportunities that we we are presented with determines how strong that prefrontal cortex becomes and how much will power we are able to develop for ourselves the good news is that once you develop will power you can extend it to all walks of life once you do it with one thing you know you can exercise it in some other walk of life as well even better than will power is called the why power swami ji has spoken about it and when you are clear about why you are doing something will power will automatically follow so when why power you develop about something which is important it is even more important than will power okay so but yeah that is a, st- a strong thing and then we need to exert our will power to develop good habits and once we have developed those then we don't need to spend any more will power it becomes a second nature to us 
So it's a good question. I thought I'll briefly tackle that. And the second question that was asked is, how can we get rid of anger? Any tips to get rid of anger? Is attachment present even after mind is purified? You said attachment to God, while in the graph it was quite reverse. So attachment to God is a good thing. We need to increase attachment to God. The detachment from world will automatically happen. Whenever something is stated in our scripture that it is not good for us, it is in the material sense. So greed, anger, attachment, all of these things are harmful for us in the material world. And having said that, when you exercise the same thing on the divine or spiritual realm, attachment to God, craving to meet him, anger that, you know, I've been on this path for so long and still I'm not able to progress. Greed, I need more of satsang. It, all these become an asset. Now, how do we get rid of anger? This, this could be a topic in itself. I'm going to put it on chat for everyone. The, oops, the playlist. I will get the playlist and put it. Maybe somebody can find it in the meantime. Uh, it's on the channel, the anger management. If you go to the playlist, maybe somebody can find it and put it, check the videos. And maybe we can bring it in one of our sessions later down the line. Anger management, we have spent a good amount of time on this topic. 2.63, where uh, uh, I think that Krodhat Bhavati Sammoha Sammohat Smriti Vibhrama Smriti Bhrinshat Buddhi Nasha Buddhi Nasha Pranashati. That 2.63, we spent about a week on this topic. So you may want to check it out on our YouTube. Uh, somebody can find it. That will be good. Um, you know, one of our co-hosts. And you can post. Oops. If you have any specific questions, I'll be more than happy to speak in person with you offline on that. Now let's move on. So this is the YouTube link, but uh, let me see if I can copy it from here. All right, so let me copy it and paste it in the chat. That way we can move forward with our discussion. And you can take benefit from it. You can check it out. There are other playlists as well, other videos in the past sessions as well, something that might interest you. Uh, a lot of topics are there in the playlist that we have already discussed in these sessions. But we'll keep bringing uh, some of these key topics as the opportunity presents. Now let's move on. We spoke briefly about the repetitive thoughts, attachments, object of attachment leads to greed. If you don't get it, it leads to anger and fear as well, you know, that it will be snatched away. So attachment is a root cause and the manifestation of attachment comes in form of greed, anger and fear. So there's an interesting thing I came across. It says that nobody has become uh, rich with money and nobody has become happy by fulfilling their desires. Yeah, so it's a very deep and profound thing. Think about it. So by fulfilling desires, actually the real secret of becoming happy is not by fulfilling desires, but by eliminating them. Okay, material desires. But if you're forming spiritual desires, I need more of seva, I need more of satsang, I more need more of sadhana, I need darshan of God, I need to serve him. It is a good thing. It's a, it's a good thing. But if you think the more we will desire, the more it will make us happier um, by achieving the objects of our desire, uh, scriptures say it is like putting fuel to fire. When you put fuel to fire, it asks for more. You are never satiated. And our scriptures say that this process continues throughout. Not even here, even in celestial abode, this drama continues. You know, all the way up to Brahma Lok, even Indra wants the seat of Brahma. And even at the Brahma Lok, you would still not be satiated. You would say, okay, I'm still missing something. It's like a trap of 99 where, you know, the cricketers say, if only if I have one more run, you know, I'll be happy. But it never happens. So this is what we spoke about yesterday. Um, Ragdwesh, attachment, all that stuff we have spoken about. And then we said, why do we need to get purified, right? Purified mind is needed for us to experience things that we have been craving for, which is happiness, joy, peace, and to get rid of things that trouble us, like anger, fear, greed and stuff, right? We spoke about this concept, like our mind is like an old dirty cloth that needs to be cleaned up. And there are only two areas. One is the material world, which is made up of Triguni Maya. And the second is all pure God. Now we need certain apparatus to see things. Like for example, if we have to hear a heartbeat, we need a st stethoscope. If we need to see microorganisms, we need a microscope. 
And if you want to experience and see God, there's an apparatus there as well. It is a purified heart. The day it is purified heart, God will be visible to you. You know, there was a guy who was uh, doing sadhana of God that I want your darshan and he was doing his sadhana, okay, relentlessly and with a lot of devotion. And he continued for years and years and years and years. And finally, God manifested in front of him. But when he saw God in front of him, he turned his face to the other side. It's like I'm cutty with you. Okay, I don't, I'm upset with you. So God said, what happened? You know, now finally, you were looking for my darshan and I'm here in front of you. So he said, you took so long, you know, this, this is not fair. I've been worshipping with so much of devotion and for so many years and you have taken so long to come. God said, you know what, look at that stone. He, he actually pointed him towards something which was not even a stone, a small pebble, micro pebble, little bit of micro pebble, which was a little black one. He said, look at that. I was always here in front of you. This whole small pebble that you see, the whole, it was a whole mountain of your papas from the previous you know, karmas. And when you kept on doing devotion, it kept on shrinking, shrinking, shrinking. And now it come to a state where you are just able to see me. I was always there. So this is how it works. When you are purified, spirituality is all about becoming better, good people. If we go by, uh, by our own yardstick of becoming good, you know, by doing things that everybody carries a certificate of saying I'm good, then more often than not, you'll get it wrong. Okay. Scriptures say both pap and punya are pap only because they will keep you bind, basically bound in this material world only. Unless you go to gunatit. That's what Bhagavad Gita talks about. Attached to the divine. So that is what we were talking about. So let's move on. Uh, let's reiterate this concept through a Okay, so we did speak about, you know, attachment, anger and fear, they go down. When you start attaching your mind to God and you start becoming purified. So these things will automatically, you don't have to do anything about it. It will automatically happen. It's just like if you don't give a conducive environment for something. For example, if you go to a hilltop, like in Himachal, if you go all the way up to the hilltop, you cannot grow mango trees there. trees there. Why? Because the environment is not conducive for it. Similarly, when our heart starts becoming purified, our mind starts getting cleansed, you just grow out of these things. These things will no longer torment you. You don't even have to exert your willpower. It's like you grow out of it. right? Like we grow out of so many toys, which we used to enjoy, relish in childhood. So we simply start growing out of it. And the seeds of these imperfections that we have been carrying since time immemorial, the, those seeds also start getting burnt. This is the benefit of cleansing our mind or purifying our mind by attaching to the divine and building that consciousness. Now, let's uh, listen to a beautiful video. I've put the speed a little more so that we can cover it. It's a beautiful video. Let's hear it to reinforce some of the concepts that we're talking about. Let me know. Karim. So this is the continue. Are you able to hear it? From the past verse, he says that in this way, so many souls in the past purified themselves. They freed themselves from attachment, from fear, from anger, through knowledge of me. And then they reached me. Somebody said to his Guru, then Guruji, I have got so many problems. And you say that God is all pervading. He is everywhere. Why can I not see God everywhere? If he is everywhere, why can't I see him? Guruji said, your body is full of bacteria. We all know that. It has got billions of bacteria. Why can you not see them? He said, they are there, but I will need a microscope to see them. Guruji said, you need an apparatus to see what is already there. Likewise, if you are eager to see God, the apparatus you need is a pure heart. Nirmala mana jana so mohi pava mohi kapata chala chidrana bhava God says, those who are pure at heart will attain me. The Bible says, blessed are those who are pure at heart, for they shall see me. So, this purification of the heart through bhakti. So, Krishna says out here, that purity was achieved by getting rid of attachment. Attachment is the bane of humankind. The reason for suffering is attachment. 
Because if there is no attachment, then you say jahi vidhi rakhe ram, tahi vidhi rahiye. However, God wishes to keep me, I am happy. Chahe jhompadi me vas kar, chahe mehlo me rahiye. But we become attached. I want to live like this. I want this bodily comfort. I want this security for myself. And the quality of my life should not get affected. These attachments, they cause anxiety. And then attachment leads to desire. So first you are attached. Now supposing you repeatedly thought that Rasgulla has given me so much of happiness. The mind started clinging to Rasgulla. So that, that is the attachment. And once that clinging is there, it is unavoidable. The desire will arise. So Sangat Sanjayate Kamaha. Now the desire will come. I need Rasgullas. I need Rasgullas. Even while listening to Swamiji's lecture, the mind will in between visit the Rasgulla. When will he stop? I hope I'm going to get Rasgullas for lunch. Now it may not be attached to Rasgulla. You analyze where does your mind go while listening to the lecture? Swamiji goes and visits my child. That means the attachment is to the child. So this attachment causes a desire. And when you get the object of the attachment, ah, so nice. You enjoy and then again the desire arises. So the contemplation goes on. How will I get the object of my attachment? So that increases the attachment and which increases the desire further. So there's a layer of attachment, desire, attachment, desire, attachment, desire. It goes deeper and deeper and deeper. So the simple solution to get rid of suffering is to get rid of attachment. And we said no. Thinking about going solar, but not sure whether it's worth it for your home? Well, before you get quotes. Swamiji, you are a Baba. You are saying get rid of attachment. We are householders. It's not as easy as you think. Well, one day you will have to leave the world in any case. That attachment will bring you back. Once, Narad and Angira, they went to a market, Chandni Chalk in Delhi. And there was the Kirana shop. You know, the ration shop. So they keep the grain in gunny bags. There's a gunny bag of wheat and a gunny bag of rice. And a goat came, started eating the gehu, the wheat. The shopkeeper, he caught the goat by the goat's beard and took a stick and started whacking the goat. And the goat cried, Man! and it went off from there running. Narad broke into a laughter. So Angira said, Devarshi, you are a saint. You are laughing at the misery of the goat. This is not appropriate. This is not saintly. You should be filled with compassion. Narad said, I was looking into the past life of this goat. In the past life, the goat was a human being. And it was the father of this shopkeeper. So this was his shop. And he was so attached to it. The only thing in his mind was the shop and how much earnings are happening. The consequence was, he did not utilize the human form properly. So he went into the lower species and became a goat. But because of his attachment, he is visiting out here. Now, the shopkeeper's son is the present shopkeeper. He doesn't realize it's my father in his next life who is coming as a goat. And he's whacking it. That is why I was laughing at the irony of it. So this attachment keeps on bringing us back. And if we decide, one day I have to leave it all. Why not leave it right now? From inside. Kripaluji Maharaj says, Jag chhod na hi hoga Govind Radhe one day you have to leave the world. Nobody can take it with them. So why don't you leave the attachment right now? And when attachment goes, along with it goes fear. The cause of fear is none other than attachment. Somebody says, no Swaraji, I've got fear of insecurity for the future. I fear the insecurity for the future. So now analyze it. Why is this fear coming? Because you are attached to the comforts of the present. And hence you are fearing, if these comforts don't remain, then how will it be like? That is why you are anxious for what the future holds for you. But if you decide, all right, like Krishna says, the summer comes and the winter comes, learn to tolerate without being disturbed. Then the fear for the future will disappear. So fear is created by God as an indicator of course, some amount of fear is there, hardwired in our physiology as a protective measure. So the animals know fear, it helps trigger the fight or flight response. Likewise, if you were walking in the wild and you saw a bear in front, at that time a little bit of fear would be helpful. But the fear we experience is irrational, abnormal, exacerbated. And the reason for that? Attachment. 
सो फियर बिकम्स एन इंडिकेटर अभी गड़बड़ है द फीवर इज स्टिल देयर सी द फीवर इज एन इंडिकेशन दैट देयर इज डिजीज इन साइट फीवर इज द सिम्टम सो इन दिस केस द सिम्टम इज द फियर नॉट द फीवर बट द फियर एंड द प्रॉब्लम द डिजीज इन साइट इज अटैचमेंट इफ यू एक्सपीरियंस लॉट ऑफ फियर मींस देयर इज अ लॉट ऑफ अटैचमेंट what is the way to get rid of it open your heart what does that mean become slightly brave what does that mean not everything in life can be the way we want it bravery means willingness to accept situations that are against our liking willingness to accept uncertainty willingness to accept a little bit of pain if it comes along so this expansion of the heart will make us brave and enable us to accept life as it is and get rid of the subtle attachments of bodily comfort and security and then we open up to the possibilities of life anger also is caused by attachment because attachment leads to expectations when expectations are not met that creates anger from inside so all these are happening due to attachment lord krishna says with true knowledge you get rid of it true knowledge not mere theoretical knowledge in theory we all say swameva mata ch pita tvameva all everybody goes to the temple and says swameva mata ch pita tvameva is the most spoken sanskrit verse in the hindu dharma what are you saying i am saying oh god you alone are mine you alone are my father you alone are my mother the theoretical knowledge is all there but practical knowledge is not there so when we have true knowledge then this attachment will go how will it go one jeweler passed away if you're spending over 15k per month on credit cards then you should never be paying for first class travel his son was only 7 years old his son said now how do i take care of myself mother said mera father had kept some jewels in this box go and sell it to his friend So the seven-year-old jeweler's son took the box to his uncle and said, "Uncle, you know, my father has passed away. Can you buy these? We'll maintain ourselves from it." The jeweler looked at it. He said, "You know, the market is going up. It's not a good time to sell. You do one thing. You start working at my shop. I'll train you up. In seven years, you will be a jeweler yourself." So this guy started getting trained in his uncle's jewelry shop. And one day, he was now an expert jeweler. He said, "You know, that jewel case which I gave you, should we sell it now? The market is up." So uncle said, "Take a look at it." He brought it and showed it to him. And this young boy, who was now an expert jeweler, he looked and he said, "These are fakes." He took them and threw them. Then he said, "Uncle, why did you not tell me on the first day that they were fakes?" Uncle said, "You know, you didn't have knowledge to recognize that they are fakes. If I had told you, you would not have believed. Now you have knowledge. You have realized them for what they are." Similarly our ignorance is that i will find happiness in material things this is the ignorance if i get this sense object i will be happy if i get this i will be happy this ignorance of ours doesn't go i tried a hundred times no i did not try correctly now i'll try i'll get happiness despite a thousand bad experiences we still think no happiness must be there when i was coming to the retreat my flight landed at iad washington dallas airport so one lady one western lady came running to me she said i am listening to you on youtube so i said very nice then she showed me her opened youtube and showed me the channels which she has subscribed to and they said what is your name how do you say it out it's so difficult to say so i explained to her kundarand okay 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 so she said everything is all right in my life but i have one problem how do i find love so how to explain to her So I said, try and find selfless, divine, perfect love. She said, forget about perfect love. I want to find love for myself. I am looking around for love. So I tried to explain to her that you will not get happiness in imperfect love. She said, yeah, you know, I had found it, but then it went. I said, that means it was not perfect love. So she was not willing. I said, you go and ask anybody. Has anybody found perfect love? You are not married. You ask the married people. She said, no, it must be somewhere. There must be that perfect love. I said, then keep on repeating the experiences again and again. Keep on getting disappointed. So the knowledge is not there that there is no happiness here, and that is why the running around is happening. 
Now when that running around is going to happen, the heart will not get cleansed. And Lord Krishna says, through knowledge of me, now you understood it was not jewels, it was my illusion, it was fake broken pieces of glass, throw it away. That is real knowledge. Where you can see the so-called happiness and pleasures and love of the world for what they are. False promises, fake illusions and cut them out to keep your focus on divine love, that perfect love. This is the power of knowledge. It will cut your attachment. All right. Hope you enjoyed this powerful video. So the only way to cut attachment, I think Aparna ji or somebody was asking yesterday, <clears throat> you want to experience it. By knowledge, we can cut our attachment. Right? Our saints are telling us what you are looking for in this world is the broken pieces of glasses. Like that jeweler's son, the day our ignorance is dispelled, we will understand. All along, we were going after the broken, broken pieces of glasses while we should have actually utilized our life for something more rewarding and meaningful that is getting closer to God because that is where our purpose or self-interest would get fulfilled. And we all are selfish. Okay, It's not a bad thing to be selfish because we'll continue to be selfish until we become God-realized. The technical problem, small technical problem is that we are selfish, not truly selfish, right? Because we are being selfish for our body, not for our soul, because we have forgotten our identity. So all the self-interest that we are trying to fulfill is for our body and our senses and our mind, right? So that, that is not going to satiate us because our soul says, no, I need something more. I need something more, right? I need some happiness which persists. It's not like I had a good drink last evening and now I'm having a hangover. Where did that happiness go? So I want a happiness which once comes never goes away. And then it should not even become stale. Right? The worldly happiness becomes stale after a while. You go watch a movie, you enjoy it, you watch it again, you say, okay, it's good, but all right. Third time, fourth time, fifth time, you'll say anything but that movie. So this is how the worldly happiness keeps on diminishing. And of, of course, it is finite in extent. So soul says, I need something much more than that. And then our attachment has to be put in perspective, right? The fear, see, then the irony of human life is that, see, God has endowed it with faculties such as prefrontal cortex that we spoke about, which we can use to harness our willpower. It needs to be strengthened. And then God has given us amygdala. Amygdala is flight or fight response that God, um, Swamiji was talking about. Fear is good. Fear is good because that helps us survive. If a leopard comes in front of you and you become fearless, then you know, you'll become a history very soon. Fear is good, provided it is placed properly, right? It is in context. But most of the fears that we create because of our attachment are illogical, irrational, and speculative in nature. Mm -hmm. And the other problem that happens with such fears born out of attachment is we are creating a test for ourselves. You know, you start speculating, now you are putting the universe into motion so that to create that test for you, so that universe wants you to learn that lesson, to conquer that fear and not have that kind of a pessimistic mindset. So having irrational fears is, is not at all auspicious. You know, we are just making our spiritual journey slower and also creating bad sanskars and also potentially creating tests for ourselves. That is how bad fear, our irrational fears are. Swamiji said, just become brave. Just open up your heart. Say, I'm going to be willing to tolerate pain, so be it. Right? So those kind of, and then you can actually use adversity or some kind of a difficult situation as a sp springboard for your development. That is the real mindset to have. But the real knowledge is important because without knowledge, we cannot really conquer the attachment part of it. Otherwise, we, our mind will continue to justify the attachments. It keeps building lifetime after lifetime. Now, in the previous verse 4.9, we are talking about God said that those who truly know the divine nature of his birth, because he said my birth is not ordinary like humans, right? Even though it may seem so. Uh, and his works are called Leelas. In this one, he's saying that legions of human beings in all ages, they become god by this means, by truly knowing the nature of him. And they achieved by goal by purifying their minds through devotion. 
And Sri Aurobindo said that you must keep the temple of the heart clean if you want to install therein the living presence. So it's like, even if we have to welcome a friend or somebody whom we respect or whom we love, we clean our home, right? We put the nice pillows and we do the vacuum and everything. Everybody does that on Diwali because everybody is very fond of welcoming Lakshmi, right? So here we are looking at welcoming God, who is the husband of Lakshmi. So we got to be respectful about it. So when we do that, here, our drawing room where we want to host God is our heart only. And that needs to be cleaned. Only in a clean heart would God come, right? We said, what is the postal address of God in one of our previous sessions? The postal address of God is Urpur, like Nurpur, Kanpur, Bilaspur in India. Pura, Urpur, Ur is the heart. What kind of a heart? Clean heart. So we clean our heart and God will manifest. He's anyway resided within. He will start manifesting. And Bible also states, blessed are the pure in the heart for they shall see God. Okay, so this is a common theme. Now, how do we purify? It? What does the, how does the mind get purified? We spoke about it. Ravain says, without devotion to God, the dirt of the mind will not be washed away. Prema bhagati jala binu ragurai abhiyantara mal kabuhuna jai. Without devotion to God, no way you can clean your, no matter what spiritual practice you are doing, if you are not doing devotion to God, you are not attaching it to the all pure, the mind, the defects of the mind will still remain. The quality of the mind will still not improve. Okay, it's a very simple principle. Also, Shankaracharyaji, he also says that without engaging in devotion to the lotus feet of Lord Krishna, the mind will not be cleansed. Very simple principle. If you want to clean your mind, you have to attach it to God. And when you, that and now you may say that, see, these principles are all interrelated. We said that the, that question was asked to us, by the way, which I got wrong, that three things that are needed in bhakti, nirantarta, ananyata, and nishkamta. Why do we need nirantarta? Nirantarta means continuity. Why do we need continuity? Continuity is needed because, see, you attach your mind to God. It becomes clean. Very simple. Now you attach it back to world, it becomes dirty. So what is happening here is Kunjar Shachavat in our scriptures say, the elephant goes, takes bath. It takes bath, so it's clean. What does it do immediately after that? It puts dust on top of it. So the same thing happens with our mind as well. So you take it to God, you do your meditative practice, you are doing your chanting with remembrance or whatever practice you are doing. So it is getting cleansed. Now you take it back to world, it's again dirty. So that is why God says, bring in nirantarta. Nirantarta means have that, con build that consciousness for major, major part of your day until it becomes your second nature. We spoke about this concept. God is not, see, world does not demand your mind. World demands your work and attention. That's all. Nobody in your relationship would say, I give me your mind. They only are concerned about the work. Okay, I need this from you. I need that from you and that. On the contrary, God doesn't care about your work. He says, I only need your mind. Okay, so you can manage these together. Man hari me tan jagat me. Right? So you can actually build that consciousness. So that, that nirantarta, we start getting closer to that nirantarta, the continuity, so that we are not cleaning it, dirtying it, cleaning it, dirtying it kind of a deal, right? And less cleaning, more dirtying and all that stuff should not happen. It says that if you have a choice to do satsang, which is more powerful, satsang or kusang? Kusang is more powerful. Okay, satsang, whatever you have accrued over years, a movement of kusang can actually erode it away. So, unless we start building nirantarta through the practices that, you know, one of the practices we, you know, when we started with these sessions, we took on a challenge of filling the voids of our day with God's name and remembrance. So, you can continue that challenge even now. It's a very good practice. Okay, it will help you build a lot of spiritual resilience, strength and your joy factor as well. So, these kind of small practices that we can build in our routine, including our ekant satna, filling our gaps with God's name and remembrance, uh, investing time wisely, doing these sessions, uh, doing more of seva and not the worldly stuff, really thinking about relatives and all that stuff, you know, there, there will never be a time where all the agendas of your life will be accomplished, trust me. We always, our mind always gives us excuse that let me take care of this, that, this, this, <laughs> the world will continue. Okay, they will continue to have their agenda. So for our own sake, if we start prioritizing these things, we'll start getting better at it. 
moving on oh my god it crashed okay so how does this process work sovereign recipe so sovereign recipe is this is your heart okay it is impure okay this is bad news it is called antakaran it is impure that is why it's not looking so bright as you would like it to be okay and as you it is impure and then you gradually start to you know purify it by attaching it to god that is how your antakaran and then finally it will become shine forth it will become completely god like that is a purification of antakaran mind that you need to do by attaching your mind to god in your day to day karma yoga is a great recipe for that yeah your attachment has to be to god focus on your work so you know god is not demanding you 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 know think about me you you focus on your work but the attachment at the back of your mind should not be to your friends family relative and this and that it should be to god is essentially what karma yoga is so this is a sovereign recipe to cleanse the mind from the defects of lust anger greed envy illusion detach it from the world it to the supreme lord in fact if you start attaching it to the supreme lord lord the detachment will happen as a natural consequence without you even having to put any effort for it okay this is how it works so with that said on oh no, aeroplane is gone any questions on what we have spoken about today so this is how it goes our mind this is what it is cluttered with right now right our pet home baby bride grandparents all that stuff and then it is tainted with good may maya so if majority of your day is spent thinking about all these things you are playing in these three gunas satva rajas and tamas you can only hope that the object of your meditations people whom you are thinking about are at least satvik so you get some at least celestial results you know of course that is also not good so if your grandfather kid pet and all those things you are thinking about them in a satvik mode and those personalities if you are getting very emotional about them they are satvik then you will get satvik results that is your best bet however what bhagavad gita is saying you should actually be thinking about god's roop guna leela dham guru that that will make you guna teeth because it is all pure the other one is and you are the authors of your own destiny okay thought by thought we are forging our destiny it's as simple as that okay with that i'll take a quick pause any questions around what we have spoken about today please fill out the feedback tracker um, any questions that you want to pick i started doing that tomorrow we don't have a session we start again on sunday evening which is monday morning for india and we will continue on this journey um but uh, what we have spoken about today any questions around that but please do fill out the feedback tracker as well for any questions uh, or offline discussions that you might need radhe radhe you can see radhe radhe so radhe radhe so, yeah so you told so in, in the video you are playing the the guru and uh, that teacher has told ki fear is created by the god and uh, so sir ki uh, so all the fears that we face in our life is created by the god is God, uh, God, or some of them, and some fear are created by us also. So, how you know that this fear is created by the God and this fear is created by us? I don't know which fear you would say would be created by God. See, Maya, Maya does it strict. Maya is a servant of God, so Maya would keep raising your game. But fear is a faculty that is given to us to put it to proper use, so that we can operate effectively in this world, right? now if you become fearless and think i'm going to jump off an aeroplane that is not a good fearlessness right so fear has to be put in perspective but if you are generally being fearful about everything oh my god you know something bad will happen oh my god what what happens if i fail oh, you know my old old age i don't know who's who's going to take care of me and all those kind of fears if you starting building for yourself then you are not doing yourself a big service okay so that is where god says you you live life um have a complete faith on god arm yourself with right knowledge and fear will automatically be put in perspective you know you it's not and, like uh, you start creating fears around things so sir in this uh, we uh, we are uh, we are studying about the uh, conversation between the in this uh, bhagavad gita about uh, uh, krishna ji and uh, uh, that uh, arjun so as i be observing the krishna life so he has also many as a, in the in his love life so there are many gopis and there is radhas so how we should uh, in our life like i have also my very various uh, female friends so how to uh, have a good uh, 
कि ये ठीक है इनको इनके साथ अच्छे से बिहेव करना है इनसे अच्छे से बात करना मतलब आप अपना ट्रू लव कैसे फाइंड करें ओके दिस इज अबाउट फियर अटैचमेंट एंड स्टफ ओके दिस इज आउट ऑफ सिलेबस क्वेश्चन आउट ऑफ नो नो सर इट्स लाइक attachment we will put it in perspective see we have spoken about this in the session maybe we can have offline conversation we are not okay. to emulate god we have to look at his teachings right yeah, yeah. we have to this is the same lord krishna who has recited bhagavad gita as well so before okay. getting the opis and true love first understand bhagavad gita implement those okay. principles intellectualize and implement those in life and then those concepts will also grow into you right so yes in general it's a good philosophy to be selfless and uh, uh, understanding you know how to operate in relation we can have more offline discussion around it but copying god is usually not a good idea okay uh, picking up stuff about krishna without actually gone through it's like i want to do the phd and uh, would rather ignore the the undergraduate message that he is giving you so let's first focus on bhagavad gita before we can get into bhagavatam canto 10th and talk about gopis radha krishna and all right we can do that when we get into bhakti and higher levels of bhakti but it's a bit premature discussion uh, given the context that we are in right now but we can definitely have an offline conversation on this yes sanjay uh, ji first of all uh, i just realized this happy first month to the youngest attendee of our class arya who is in uh, seema's uh, dap actually on her shoulder <laughs> devotee so that's our youngest devotee in daily wisdom from bhagavad gita so now we have a one month old to i don't know okay but yeah we have a pretty big range of participants now so thank you seema for bringing arya to the session so and for being a great nanny as well yes amazing and i i wanted to uh, <clears throat> just recently we all heard bhakti shatak from swami ji so there is a bhakti shatak which relates with this topic so i wanted to say that should i wait till the devotional segment or i can say right now uh no sure what 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 is it it's with some concept or some singing around that concept i mean i can just read it out or i can sing it <laughs> जग विराग हो तित नोई नोई हरि अनुराग राधे राधे जब हो हरि अनुराग जब गुरु चरण मन लाग राधे राधे द डिग्री ऑफ वंस डिटैचमेंट फ्रॉम द वर्ल्ड is directly proportional to the intensity of one's attachment to god and this attachment develops when the mind gets devoted to the lotus feet of the guru very true thank you for bringing that in uh, we will tie this all together uh, you know when we get to 4.34 talk about the concept of guru but yes the god's grace flows via guru because god is not going to see you meet you in person un until you are ready and the person who makes us ready is guru only so that is how that relationship gets established so thank you for bringing that in and, and just one thing um, i i'm sharing the youtube link of swami ji's lectures who are already there on youtube the bhakti shatak lectures so that whoever missed out on family camp they can actually check that out that's sure. yeah please yeah that that will be great so do check it out they are loaded with lot of tattva gyan and devotion because bhakti shatak is like a capsule course on the entire scriptures very very deep very profound and covers lot of things in depth and swami ji has given his beautiful commentary on it so do check it out and in in general i think you should check out the videos of swami ji and, and help uh, spread it around by liking share commenting on it yes survi you wanted to share something and i see tanmay goel ji after long today go ahead survi Radhe Radhe. Actually, I had a question uh, that we know that pride is a result of ignorance, right? So, is there some kind of a attachment related to that as well? Because I feel that I am very proud. We all have. It's very sukshma, right? Very subtle. Even a person who's sweeping a floor is also proud. The yeah, pride is something which is uh, which is something um, uh, with the false ego. It creates that. and that that is something that that is the the furthest away from reality the pride aspect of it right and uh, 
that is something that God has for breakfast, lunch and dinner. Pride. He doesn't like pride. Even with his devotees, he keeps on checking that defect. You know, he when he when the gopis got slight bit of pride that you know how beautiful we are, and we are having the privilege of having Krishna with us. Krishna immediately vanished, and he has done that to Naraji a lot of times, right? Where Naraji always think that I'll do Narayan, Narayan, and reach Narayanji. I always know about his whereabouts, and there was once a time Narayan said, "Okay." And he's doing Nara and he's not able to find him. So pride is something that uh, it basically takes us further away from God. And God is, you know, he, he always checks the pride and eats the pride of devotees to do the course correction. So we just have to bring in that knowledge and get better at it. Like from a distance, the mountain looks equal to us. And as we start getting closer to the mountain, we start understanding, you know, we are this much and mountain is such a big thing. And then uh, firefly can have a pride of its light until it sees the sun. So our pride gets you, we need to put it in perspective. Who are we? You know, we are a dot within a dot within a dot within a dot. If you look at it in the grand scheme of things, right? And it's just a spark of God's splendor that we are endowed with. What is there for us to be pride, proud about? So that check, I think it's a self-enforcement. But this pride, this ego would remain, uh, even though it might be subtle. And uh, we need to constantly keep it in perspective and then they say ego is something um, ego pride I think I'm mixing these two things but ego is something which is first to come and like last to leave but the defect of pride is something we need to keep it in check in fact humility humility should also be supplemented with the thought that humble means everything is enabled in us through God but that doesn't mean we become we are a doormat for the world at the same time, you need to supplement it with a thought because we are fragment part of God's. We have infinite potential and the potential to become like our father. right? So that thought has to be supplemented so that it does not bring you down in that I am nothing good for nothing and a useless person. That is not humility. So it has to be supplemented with that. When, but the, when the pride comes, you always say, okay, now I'm becoming a thief because it's not doesn't truly belong to me. It's enabled in me through God. So I need to give credit back to where it truly belongs rather than thinking I am so great, right? So I think it's an ongoing process that we need to constantly keep a check on because God doesn't like pride. It takes us further away from God. Thank you. No worries. Thank you. Thank you for asking that, Purvi. It is a good question. Help, help me reflect on it as well. Yes, Tanmayji, you wanted to add something? Tanmayji is flying high in devotion these days. Practicing Sakya. Yes, Tanmayji, go ahead. Radhe Radhe Nitinji, am I audible? Love to see you as well. Um, not just hear you, but okay. yeah, go ahead, please. Uh, okay. So, my question is that uh, it, it's an hypothetical scenario. Like, since uh, so many lifetimes, we are conditioned to these four Varnashram experiences. Mm -hmm. So, like an ordinary, all the ordinary souls in the human form are conditioned to all those experiences since the childhood till the age of uh, like till the old age so one soul might leave the this realm before achieving reaching any particular varnashram so my question is if someone somehow reaches this uh, gunatid state it has detached everything like it has detached everything from all the material associations from all the souls but the question is like it's now it is like like we are just solely associated with the god so in terms of experience don't you find that it will become a boring like how much time you will be like for how much time you will be just associated with one god even in goloka you will be just finding just only God and yourself. So that is why we are not there, right? We don't and so basically you are saying we will become bored with God as well, right? Yeah, like it's I know it's materially limited thought. Okay, so I think it's a hypothetical. Say, even a God realized person. Okay, so it's a hypothetical asking. Pray That's for hard. other associations as well. Yeah. So yeah, it's a hypothetical question you're asking. Swamiji has answered that question on if today. God were to take you to Golok, you will definitely get bored because everything will be like Krishna, Krishna and everything related to. So until you have the, it's like if somebody puts a nursery kid to a PhD class, he will get bored. 
so that is why god said get gain the eligibility and then you will not be bored in fact you will be experiencing new new realizations a you know infinite bliss ever fresh bliss and different things so we don't have the eligibility so we, it's a speculative hypothetical question until we reach there okay but if that was the case say we will be saying okay enough of god realization we are happy here in this material world okay so it's a like hypothetical every associations are temporary in till now what we have experienced everything is temporary associated like temporary experiences some we all will all experience that this thing is giving me bliss for a this much particular time but eventually it fades away when again the craving comes but yes, yes. is it the same thing no in it's that not way? it's not we have spoken about this concept uh, bliss of god meets three criteria it is sat chit anand it is infinite in extent it is ever increasing it's ever fresh okay and then it 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 does not follow the law of diminishing return like it happens it it keeps on increasing so we can't understand that right now right but this is how it's meant to be right in it's not like the worldly love because that is that is how divine love is um, is explained in our scriptures so maybe once we reach golok um this question will be answered more satisfactorily it's a hypothetical question until that point you know there was a painter who was trying to draw god god manifested in front of him he said you know i'm going to draw you so god gave him divine vision so he painted he started painting him and when he painted him and then he looked back at him he said oh no no you look even more beautiful and then he corrected it and then he again he looked at he said no 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 you look even more beautiful he was not able to draw perfect picture because newer and newer and fresher and fresher realizations he is having okay so that is how god realization and that bliss goes not like material bliss you will not get bored and that is why god is not bringing you to golok because on the day you gain eligibility he will bring you there and then this question of getting bored will, will be addressed as well okay let's move on a couple of hands and then we move on to our devotional segment 10 o'clock we finish our philosophical discussion but all of you are welcome to stay back for our devotional segment where we do some chantings and uh, you will enjoy some beautiful bhajans and chantings by our participants um, so i would encourage you to stay back yes sir rahul you wanted to say something or ask yes, uh, there is a question from aparna ji that is doership the same as pride that is our question doership is same as pride yeah it's kind of i mean there are all certain concept doership with the sense false sense right that i am doing it so it's born out of our ego and ego is it said it's the first thing to come and the last thing to leave however as you keep on progressing spiritually that sense of doership keeps on diminishing over time right so like tulsi das ji say said right na mai kari na kari sakum sahib karta mor karat karavat aap hai tulsi tulsi shor so when he wrote this beautiful literature he had that realization it's not me who's doing it but a normal person will say you know what i have created this and they will go and roam around telling their name so as we start getting more our mind starts getting purer and cleaner that sense of doership will also start diminishing and it's our false pride and ego which gives us that sense right now yeah rahul yeah, can we yeah can we go to the this thing the devotional segment anupurna ji wanted to say something uh, anupurna ji wanted to add something i see her hand raised before we move on to I, I i just wanted to ask a question maybe i think it may you know what, how can one uh, can do the gunati uh, uh, loving god gunati you know sattva rajas and you have yeah. to aim for I'll give that you an example. but i can't comprehend yes gunati let me give you an example okay on i think it might help others as well how do we build build gunati consciousness um, by the way please fill out the feedback tracker in the meantime uh, if you have any other questions because we'll be moving to the devotional segment after this one so let's say you are you are make you are you are serving somebody you are giving somebody food okay so now the act is giving a food to somebody now let's say the consciousness how it can vary your consciousness could be that okay i'm going to give this food to somebody um, you know let me just give whatever is remained so that you know i don't want anybody else to fall sick even if this person eats that's fine it's kind of a tamasic consciousness right where you're giving it not with an intent to help somebody but just getting rid of something that you don't need or maybe for some other purpose then it becomes tamasic 
now you are giving it to somebody and then you tell people you know what i help people i i give food to people around and you publicize it then it becomes rajasik you are still giving food to somebody now you are giving food to somebody you simply give the food because you want to help them but inside your heart you are patting yourself you know what i am doing it i am so good i help people so you are acknowledging it to yourself then you are satvik although you are not telling it to anybody but that pride of doership is still there and then you are giving food to somebody and then thanking god thank you god for giving me this ability to help somebody or to feed somebody then it becomes gunatit so the act is the same the your intention or the motive or the consciousness behind that act will dictate whether you have accrued tamasic karma rajasic karma satvik karma or gunatit karma i hope it yeah. makes sense yeah thank you no i can understand you know what should be our purpose if we have to do intention, you know, intention eat, intention eat. and the motive we have it determines our karma or the okay. result okay thank you yeah thank, thank you very much okay so do we have all the hands now for the devotional segment thank you everybody for the engaging discussion we move to our devotional segment that we are going to spend a bit of a time because we don't have a hard stop today so who tarun ji you're going to sing as well and i see nivan is going to sing today okay and urvi okay let's start with urvi because she started raising hand so we'll start with urvi tarun ji and then arnima nivan is going to sing as well go ahead go ahead urvi radhe 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 apna pan rakhna mere khan sha अपना पान रखना मेरे घन घड़ी घड़ी पान पान नाम तिहारो घड़ी घड़ी पान पान नाम तिहारो रटे मेरी रसना मेरे घन अपना पान रखना मेरे घन दे उपहार हार आसुआन को दे उपहार हार आसुआन को बना लू तुझे अपना मेरे घन अपना पान रखना मेरे घन राधे राधे Radhe Radhe Urvi, very nice, very deep, soulful, beautiful bhajan. Loved it. Thank you. You have teed off our devotional segment very nicely. So loved it. Lot of hearts coming your way. Thank you so much, Urvi. Okay, Tarun Ji, are you all set? And then I think Nivan is ready today as well. Nivan, go ahead, Tarun Ji. Radhe Radhe. like to give the version just uh, in the context of uh, the anger and all things which we understand philosophically but still we are not able to manage ye maya teri bahut kathin hai ram ye maya teri bahut kathin hai ram rakt maas hatti ke dher par mada hua hai cham रक्त मास हटी के ढेर पर मढ़ा हुआ है चाम देख उसी की सुंदरता हो जाती नींद हराम ये माया तेरी बहुत कठिन है राम करता नित्य विरोध क्रोध का कहता बुरा परिणाम 
करता नित्य विरोध क्रोध का कहता बुरा परिणाम होता क्रोधित स्वयं तो होती वाणी बिना लगाम ये माया तेरी बहुत कठिन है राम मृत्यु देखता है औरों की रोज सवेरे शाम मृत्यु देखता है औरों की रोज सवेरे शाम भवन बनाता ऐसे जैसे भवन बनाता ऐसे जैसे हर दम यहाँ मुकाम ये माया तेरी बहुत कठिन है राम राजेश्वर प्रभु तुम मायापति करुणा निधि है ना राजेश्वर प्रभु तुम मायापति करुणा निधि है ना नाथ निवेरो अपनी माया नाथ निवेरो अपनी माया जीव लहे विश्राम ये माया तेरी बहुत कठिन है राम ये माया तेरी बहुत कठिन है राम राधे 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 तरुण जी वेरी नाइस very very beautifully sung and uh, so true maya the trap of maya tom you know is very difficult to get over and sometimes i wonder you know anyways i asked swami ji you know when i met him why did he create maya he said to thicken the plot but the tatugyan says nobody created anybody okay these exist entities always exist but very nicely uh, you know very nice bhajan where we can complain to god and hopefully then he can grace us so thank you so much for that Yes, uh, Nivani, you want to sing, or who's going to sing today? You are going to sing. I think you've got some missing teeth, but go ahead. You can sing. Yeah. Radhe Radhe. Radhe Radhe. Go ahead. You can Rama, sing. Ram 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 Tarakam Ram Krishna Vasudev Bhakti Mukti Daikam Ram 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 Tarakam Ram Krishna Vasudev Bhakti Mukti Daikam Janaki Manoharam Sarvaloka Naikam Janaki Manoharam Sarvaloka Naikam Shankaraya Sevi Manu Rajamanta Rupikam Ram 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 राम कृष्ण वासुदेव भक्ति मुक्ति दायक राम 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 तारक राम कृष्ण वासुदेव भक्ति मुक्ति दायक वेरी नाइस निवान यू आर गोइंग टू गेट लॉट ऑफ हार्ट्स ओके व्हाई डू यू सिंग सो फास्ट दो यू कैन सिंग अ लिटिल स्लोली आल्सो राइट साईं और राइट गुड He has become better singer in India, so maybe you know your singing thing is going to come out even better. So in US also, I think he should participate as best as he can. So thank you, Nivan, for singing out. Ah, uh, very nice. And I see couple of other hands. Manoranjan ji, you want to sing as well, or Kabir Doha today? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah,
அதரம் மதுரம் வதனம் மதுரம் நயனம் மதுரம் ஹசிதம் மதுரம் ஹிருதயம் மதுரம் கமனம் மதுரம் மதுராதிபதி ரகிலம் மதுரம் கரணம் மதுரம் தரணம் மதுரம் ஹரணம் மதுரம் ரமணம் மதுரம் வமிதம் மதுரம் சமிதம் மதுரம் மதுராதிபதி ரகிலம் மதுரம் கொஞ்சா மதுரா மாலா மதுரா யமுனா மதுரா வீச்சி மதுரா தலிலம் மதுரா கமலம் மதுரா மதுராதிபதே ரகிலம் மதுரம் கோபி மதுரா லீலா மதுரா யுக்தம் மதுரம் மூக்தம் மதுரம் ஹீஷ்டம் மதுரம் ஸ்ரீஷ்டம் மதுரம் மதுராதிபதே ரகிலம் மதுரம் கோபா மதுரா காவோ மதுரா யஷ்டிர் மதுரா ஸ்ரீஷ்டிர் மதுரா தலிதம் மதுரம் பலிதம் மதுரம் மதுராதிபதே ரகிலம் மதுரம் அதரம் மதுரம் வதனம் மதுரம் நயனம் மதுரம் ஹசிதம் மதுரம் thank you radhe radhe thank you swati ji very nice so you get a lot of hearts beautiful madurashtakam very nice thank you sai ram ji is going to sing today huh? all right sai ram ji please go ahead radhe radhe, radhe, radhe. Uh, one kavir doha because uh, manoranjan ji inspired me sure sure go ahead we can do a doha competition one of these days maybe a dohan takshri go ahead पोती पड़ पड़ जगमुआ पंडित भयान को पोती पड़ पड़ जगमुआ पंडित भयान को ढाई अक्षर प्रेम का पड़े सो पंडित हो कबीरा very nice sairav ji ironically you look who is singing this you know the gyani who was saying aham brahmasmi brahmasmi asmi asmi aham <laughs> is saying dai akshar prem ke that's very nice good one very nice what is the transformation that's what i said i must say yes 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 very nice and Vikash. Vikash, are you going to sing Ratha Kaise Na Chale or the second one? No, sir. After seeing all this performance, I'm going to just observe the... I, I'm not going to sing anymore now. <laughs> no, no. You can sing. You can prepare for it, okay? And there are a lot of beautiful bhajans and stuff. You can always do that. So, great. Great uh, participation today. Maybe I can wrap it up with a couple of lines today from uh, Radha Govind Geet. so uh, we were talking about thinking about god and building that consciousness right so these two lines are um, i i really like those um so i just sing those two only sochna hi sadhana hai govind radhe bar bar sochna ye उनसे मिला दे बार बार सोचना ये उनसे मिला दे राधे राधे गोविंद गोविंद राधे 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 गो all right thank you everyone hope you enjoyed the session i certainly did 
devotional segment definitely adds to it's always an icing on the cake so thank you and uh, have a blessed day blessed weekend and a great rest of your evening as well and i look forward to seeing you on sunday evening us time monday morning india time and we'll continue on bhagavad gita journey uh, you know from 4.11 onwards now anything what anybody wanted to say before we wrap up our session so wanted to say thank you nitin ji Okay, thank you everybody then. Radhe Radhe from my side and have a wonderful rest of your evening. Good night, good day.